So we have, first of all, um, Carolyn Korsmeyer. And you've already heard how <coughs> Carolyn is the, the doyenne of disgust. And, but she's more than that. Carolyn is research professor of philosophy at the University at Buffalo and uh, is, I think, one of the leading philosophers uh, in aesthetics in this country and has been uh, president of the American Society of Aesthetics uh, and has also worked in sensory perception and emotion theory and is the author of a whole bunch of fascinating books, the most recent of which, when I went upstairs at lunchtime to my study, I found had just arrived. So I unpacked the, the packaging, and here it is. It's called Things in Touch with the Past. So this is, if not fresh off the press, it's this year. Uh, and other books, um, such as Making Sense of Taste, uh, Food and Philosophy, and uh, a volume that she edited uh, uh, published again this year with Jeanette Bicknell and Jennifer Judkins, uh, Philosophical Perspectives on Ruins, Monuments, and Memorials. And this afternoon, Carolyn is going to talk with us about degradation, appearance, and or versus reality. Please welcome Carolyn Korsmeyer. Thank you very much, Ivan, and thank you again for an invitation to this wonderful conference. Um, I should preface my remarks perhaps by saying that as, as Elizabeth and I were speaking a little bit earlier, a disadvantage of coming at the end of a day is not just that everyone is a little weary, it's that all of your best points have already been made. <laughs> so forgive me if I repeat some of the points that, that we've heard discussed throughout the day, although they will be in a slightly different context, I think. Like, um, like several of us, I, I've taken the title of the symposium, Degradation as an Aesthetic Value, to refer to features of an object that invite appreciation for its inter injured state, not in spite of it, but because of its injured state. In other words, things that are worn, eroded, damaged, or more trendily, vintage. Such damage may be caused by willful destruction as in war or through the slower changes wrought by time, wear and tear, fading and deterioration. Why do we consider degradation to qualify as an aesthetic property at all? Meaning, as an aspect of an object to be appreciated. Because there are many kinds of damage that, that is the last uh, response one is likely to have, such as a tooth that's eroded with decay, or a tornado that's wrecked a house, or the crumbling piles holding up a bridge. Uh, these are, are unlikely to be things that one savors. But there are other aspects of degradation that actually have an aesthetic pedigree, some of which have already been mentioned. This is foremost in the case of ruins, where the marks of age, accident, and destruction are features to be savored. And here's one of the most famous ruins, partly thanks to Wordsworth. The ravages of time can produce outlines and surfaces that are striking and formerly beautiful, even sublime. The emotions aroused with such appreciation blend with moral and existential attitudes, which both intensify and partly constitute an object's perceptual impact. So powerful is the appeal of ruins that sometimes they're built from scratch. <laughs> Most famously, with the follies and shams of Europe in the 18th and 19th centuries, plus a few medieval castles erected in the United States in the early 20th century, and compositions such as the neoclassical remnants on my own university campus. <laughs> I was poking around Google Image looking for good pictures of shams, and I thought, there's one in my own backyard. <laughs> and fittingly, it's positioned beside an artificial lake, because the, cam <laughs> the campus was built on a drained swamp. Shams remind us that the appearance of degradation evoking a sense